Hello, I'm Jason from Autopot. I'm going to show you the new tray to grow, which will be launched in 2023. It was originally designed to grow a grow bag, but it also um, has the ability to be able to grow plants in other methods, and I'll show you that in a moment. When you receive the product, you will receive a tray, a lid to go over the cavity, a length of copper tape, 10 capillary wicks, 10 spikes for the grow bag, a gold filter with a sponge inside to filter the water, two 9mm top hat grommets, one blanking cap, three spirit levels, a length of 9mm pipe, an aqua valve, and a 16 to 9mm um, inline filter. You will also receive a length or a sheet of capillary matting and also a sheet of copper and four seed trays. That's the standard pack. If you want the optional extras, they are the microherb trays, which will be ready and, and available in 2023. And also as an optional extra, we will have a fabric planter. I'm going to show you the aqua valve now. So the aqua valve consists of three parts. The top float, which you always slide from left to right, and it has a silicon in the top. And there's a hole that looks like a little volcano on the top. Slide that back in. Never, if I show you here, never try and clip it in because you may fracture this point here. So always slide from left to right or right to left. And then there's a bottom float which unclips and you have a silicon that cuts off the incoming water. So when you receive your aqua valve, it's important that you hold it at eye level and make sure that the silicon is making a parallel seal on the hole below. If you need to adjust it with your thumb, you can just adjust it, hold it at eye level and make sure this silicon here is making a parallel seal on the, um, the volcano hole below and that's it. I'm now going to show you how to put the aqua valve into the tray. Firstly, you'll take your 9mm top hat grommet and you'll push it into this hole below. It's very simple. Just feed it from the outside in and push it through the tray. Then you take your 9mm pipe and if you find that the pipe is difficult to slide through, dip it in cold water and it will change the properties of the plastic and make it harder or alternatively you can just wet it or put a very small amount of washing up detergent on there. Generally what I do, I just lick the end of the pipe and then push it through. So I'm going to push it through to probably a good eight, nine, ten inches. And then what I do, I take my collar off the aqua valve. I then thread my collar onto the pipe and then I put my aqua valve onto, connect it onto the pipe. You can dip the pipe in the end of hot water if you want to, but it's not really necessary with the aqua valve. And then tighten up the, um, the, um, the locking nut. When you feel it grip, just stop. And then you, what you do is you just pull the pipe back through. And what you need to ensure is that this half moon section is pushed onto this T section here. It does actually say it in the, in, in the tray, push aqua valve firmly onto T. So what I'll do, I'll pull the pipe back through. I'll line it up with the T. And then I'll firmly push it onto there. I always push onto the main body at the back here. Never push on here. And that's it. So that's nicely in place. So that's the aqua valve now firmly and correctly positioned in the tray to grow. I'm going to show you how to install the capillary matting now and the root control sheet. Before you install both types of matting, make sure you pre-soak them in a bucket of water. It makes life a lot easier when you're trying to install it in the tray. When you install it in the tray, make sure that you only push the matting down the two outside channels. So I'll do that now to show you. So bring the matting right over to the edge this side and then literally hold it 
on the outside and feed it into the outside edge. And then make sure you push it all the way down to the bottom of the channel and then I'll ensure that it wicks the water up correctly. And then repeat the process on the opposite channel. So you're only going to push the fabric down into two of the outside channels and that's it. And then pre-soak your root control fabric. Copper on one side, black on the other. Really doesn't matter which way you have it up. What the copper does, it prevents roots from getting past it. It's a barrier. So if you didn't have it there, then your roots will tangle up into your capillary matting and you would have to replace your capillary matting more regularly. You'll lose the colour of, of, of the copper, but don't worry about that. It's still there. It just oxidises. So you can wash this, in, put it in the washing machine, or you can just wash it in a um, washing up bowl with warm soapy water and rinse it off. But always make sure that you pre-soak the two fabrics when you're installing them. With your tray to grow, you will receive three small circular spirit levels. So they're inserted at the end of the tray here. There. And one at the far end over here. Like so. I would still always err on the side of caution and always double check that your tray is level using a spirit level. These are an indicator, the circular spirit levels. The longer the spirit level that you use, the more accurate you'll be able to, to, be able to get. It's very important that you have the tray to grow as level as possible. Using a, sponsor, a longer spirit level will ensure that. Um, and always sit the tray to grow on something hard. Don't sit it on gravel, because gravel will sink. Sit it on a board or something hard, level the board off, and then put your tray to grow on there and then make sure it's level with your spirit level. Um, <clears throat> the, the kit also comes with a length of copper matting. Oh, sorry, should I say copper, copper tape. The copper tape is wrapped around this edge here and it stops the slugs from going into or entering into the tray all the way around here. And then when you get to this edge here, you can then feed it just below the area where the aqua valve fits and then carry it all the way around the tray and back. So that's just, a, just to help keep slugs out of the tray. And then if you're using your tray to grow outside, we, we provide the kit with a blanking cap. And you can see where I've installed it here. If you're going to use it outside on the patio, the tray to grow outside on the patio, then it's advisable that you remove this or if it's not inserted, then you just leave it out. And then if it rains heavily, you turn your tank off and then any excess water that falls into your tray can drain out of this hole here. And then once it stopped raining heavily, then, then turn the tap back on. If there's water in the tray, just let the water be consumed first, then turn the tap back on. As standard, the tray to grow will come with four standard seed trays. In the early part of the season, with your capillary matted, matting method, you can put your seed trays in the tray and then germinate seeds or cuttings. And then once you're happy and you've pricked out your seedlings, you can place those in pots of various sizes and the tray to grow will irrigate pots of anywhere probably up to 10 litre pots. You can do various designs of seed trays. The most important thing, when you use a pot or a seed tray, as you'll see here, there's holes that are recessed and holes that aren't. You must make sure that there are holes that are going to make contact with a copper sheet. And exactly the same with the seed trays. These are air holes, these are water holes. It's important that you have contact, otherwise if, if there are only holes here and here, here and here, then the pot wouldn't, or the substrate or the soil in the pot wouldn't make contact and then it wouldn't wick the water up. So you can use those to bring up and bring your plants on. 
And then the other option, which will be available in 2023, are microherb trays. So you can do microherbs in there. You can obviously do microherbs in these trays if you want to as well. And then the fourth method that the tray has been designed for is a fabric planter. It's around 120 litres. Simply put that in your tray. You can do carrots, potatoes, any root vegetables are ideal. And what you would do before you turn your tank on, you would put your potatoes or carrot seeds in there, water it through until, until you see water coming into the tray. Let that water get consumed, then turn your tank on. So make sure the substrate's wait wet first. The tray to grow is designed to be connected to a reservoir of any shape or size, whether it's a water butt, a large reservoir, a small plastic tank that you buy from the DIY store and adapt yourself. So all you do, there's two options. You, all these fittings are supplied. So one option is a clip fit connector with a nine mil option. So simply push the pipe onto the end, end of the, um, the fitting. And I'm using a small tank here. This is a standard hosel lock fitting and you just click that on. If you don't have a typical hosel lock fitting and just a bayonet fitting, what you can do is simply take off this blue collar, heat this in hot water, and then push that onto your bayonet fitting. So you've got two options there if, if need be. But for the purposes of the video, we're showing you it connecting to a hose or lock fitting. So I hear that snap there. Inside this filter here, it's unscrewed, and there's a little filter inside. This little filter can be either way, it can either go that way or it can go that way, it doesn't really matter. And then all you do is just thread it back up, tighten it up as tight as you can to make sure it's watertight. And then the other type of fitting I will show you in a minute with the grow bag method, but either can be used whichever way you want to use it. And then the lid for the aqua valve simply goes over the top and then is positioned and snapped into place. And there you have the, the uh, tray to grow all set up and ready to use. But just to recap, when you're using the tray to grow with the capillary mat matting method, you can use it with seed trays, you can use it with pots, and make sure the pot is the correct pot so it draws the water up, as I previously discussed in, earlier on in the video. Probably up to 10 litres, probably even larger, but small pots. Then the other option is microherbs, but obviously you can use the seed trays that are provided with the tray to grow, to grow microherbs. These are an optional extra. And a lot, another optional extra is a fabric planter that holds around 120 litres of soil or whatever substrate you wish to use. And it's suited to grow root, root vegetables. So once your tray to grow is connected to a reservoir of any shape or size, you have the option if you're using an inert substrate such as cocoa or if you're using soil with feed in it whether to add fertilizer or not. Autopot has a dedicated one part fertilizer called the easy to grow liquid feed. It's available in a 300 ml bottle, a one litre bottle and a five litre bottle and also a 20 litre bottle. It will last for several years as long as you keep it in a cool place. Don't leave it in direct sunlight. So if you, you, if you needed to add fertiliser, you, fertilize you would just follow the directions on the bottle and fill up your reservoir, put the fertiliser in, and then if you just come on in here, I'm going to turn the tap on and you'll see the aqua valve start to flood. So the gravity pressure, it all works by gravity, no power, pumps or timers. And what this valve does, it's not a ball cock. So with a ball cock type of design, that allows water to flood in and then it always stays at the same level. This is a patented valve all around the world. And what this does, it allows water to flood into the tray to 20 millimetres, which is roughly halfway on this black locking collar here. Once it reaches that level, then it stops. The capillary matting in the tray will draw the water up to the damp surface here. And the plants or seedlings that are sitting in the tray will draw the water. The level will start to go down but this valve or aqua valve will not allow any more water to enter until the water gets to the underside of the aqua valve and then 
the surface tension within the aqua valve will break and more water will come in. It's the only design of its kind in the world where it's controlled by the plant's requirements. So it will flood to 20 millimetres, stop. The plants will then drink all the water and if you've got feed in there as well, drink all the solution. And when the, when the level goes to below the aqua valve, within half an hour to an hour, the aqua valve will know to reopen and flood the tray again. So the hotter the day, the bigger the plants, the more plants you have on there, the more the water will flood and drain. So as I said, it's not like a ball cock system where a ball cock system always has a full level of water and plants are always sitting in water. This unique design actually floods and drains in accordance to the plant's requirements. I'll show you how to use the tray to grow for a traditional grow bag. As you can see, we've already inserted nine of the capillary spikes. This is the only time that you use the spikes when you're using the grow bag. So if I show you how to put a spike together, it's very simple. You take your spike, take your, one of your lengths of capillary matting, roughly half each side, hold it to the top, thread one through one side and one through the other. And then pull them nice and tight, not too tight so you snap it. Then simply insert it into your tray. It doesn't matter which way it goes, whether it's that way or that way. And what, this, what will happen is that once you drop the grow bag onto the spikes, the spikes will pierce the grow bag and these will act as wicks and draw the moisture from the channels up into the grow bag. Get your grow bag. What you'll notice if you look down here, you'll see grow bags become very compressed when they're on the pallets. So it's very important that you fluff the grow bag up so it breaks up the compressed because the majority of them at the moment are peat. So fluff it up, make sure it's even across the length of it, and then what you're, you're now then ready to install it and drop it onto the spikes. So once you're happy that you've fluffed up your grow bag, make sure that it is properly fluffed up along the length, then what you want to do before you install it is probably two people, one at one end, one at the other, and then you can drop it into the grow bag evenly and, and just literally drop it onto the spikes and the spikes will pierce the base of the grow bag. As I mentioned before, if you're outside on a patio, you've got a blanking um, cap that can be removed if it's at, um, not in the greenhouse under cover. If you find it's difficult to put in either that way or that way, put a smidgen of washing up detergent on there and it will help it slide in. But if you're outside, always have this removed so if it rains, then the water can flood out of here. As I mentioned previously, um, using a spirit level is also important. Even though you've got the indicators, the circular spirit levels, using a long spirit level, ideally a metre long, along its length and along its width, and make sure you sit it on something firm, a piece of boarding. Don't sit it directly on gravel because gravel will sink and you'll end up with deeper water down this end and shallower water at the other end. So make sure it's on a firm surface, ideally a piece of wood or something similar, and make sure that is level first. So now I'm going to show you the holes for the bamboo canes and how to insert or put the bag into the tray. So as you notice, there's six holes around the edge of the tray, here, here, and here. The engraving says bamboo cane supports. So it's very simple. Just put all six bamboo canes into the holes. They're 15 mil holes, so they should accept most bamboo canes. And then what you would do is have a bridge across and support and make a wigwam. So before you insert your grow bag, I recommend that you turn it upside down, take a screwdriver or similar, and puncture lots of holes in the base. It doesn't matter how many, just as many as you like, really. And what that does, it allows air and allows drainage. If you look on the end of the grow bag here, they're the only drainage holes in the whole bag. There are none at the other side, only at this side here. So there's none down this side. So because this is a bottom-fed system, you want moisture going in, you want moisture to be able to escape out of the holes as well, and also air, so it adds to a better growth. So literally just a few holes, 10, 20, 30 holes, just all around. Use something smaller, it's perfectly fine. 
and then turn the bag upside down or the other way the right way around like I said it's much better to use two people and then you can drop it on the spikes evenly make sure it's all fluffed up and then literally drop it onto your grow bag onto your grow tray your easy to grow tray obviously a little bit more accurate than I've done but that's now ready to be irrigated so the other option of connecting your aqua valve to a reservoir so you can buy any plastic waste paper bin we sell um, 30 litre and 50 um, litre plastic tanks with already pre-drilled holes um, and we have all the fittings that are supplied with a tray to grow so it's very simple if you buy a purpose-built or a water holding tank you would just drill um, a 12 millimeter hole through there and I would recommend that you use a, a step drill not a standard drill but a step drill that looks like a, um, a Christmas tree and then all you do lick the end of the pipe and make sure it's wet push it through and we'll show you the inside of the tank and you can see there's a certain amount of pipe through there then I take the golf filter with the sponge in it and then push that golf filter into the pipe all the way on and then pull back and that's now the filter and connected so what you would do you would now fill up the tank put your fertilizer in ideally easy to grow fertilizer and then you're ready to um, to, to feed your uh, your grow bag once you've connected your tray to grow to your reservoir, um, you can, if you want to, add fertilizer to the reservoir. But there is a certain, generally, there's a certain amount of feed with grow bags as standard. So you can add water for the first couple of weeks and then introduce a liquid feed, a suitable liquid feed at half strength. And then as the tomatoes start to grow, then increase the strength to full strength. The tomatoes, you've got more cucumbers, you can got several options. Cut out your three holes, which generally people do, like so. And some people leave the plants in the pots and put them in there, like so. Or you can take the plants out of the pots, put them into the grow bag, and then water through quite heavily so that you see water coming into the area where the aqua valve is. And then just leave the system turned off for maybe 10 days, two weeks. When the water's disappeared, you can turn the water on for a day turn it off for four or five days turn it on when the water's gone for a day and then off for four or five days always hold back on the water in the early parts and once the plant's established then you turn the system on full time and the aqua valve will act in accordance to the plants flooding and draining and the plants will feed as and when they need it i hope you enjoyed the video take care everybody bye bye